Oh, oh my god. So this video has been eight years in the making. Um, today I'm going to basically review and give you a little synopsis of 10 Cloverfield Lane. So before we dive into the review and my opinions on it, I, I kind of got to catch you up on what 10, Clover, 10 Cloverfield Lane is um, and that it's not really a Cloverfield sequel. So Cloverfield came out in 2008 and was a kind of thriller about an apocalypse or a monster in New York City. This was supposed to be J.J. Abrams' take on an American Godzilla movie. So with that being said, that movie was great. A lot of people didn't like it, but a lot of people like me did. We're diehard fans for this movie and everything the Bad Robot does. Um, along with um, Cloverfield and Cloverfield's alternate reality game, ARG, which I'll refer to in the future, which is basically a viral marketing campaign to where there's hidden stuff online that kind of expands the universe and lets the fans interact with it. So um, out of nowhere, we got a 10 Cloverfield Lane trailer dropped on us. And a lot of people have said, you know, oh, it's not Cloverfield 2, or, you know, this movie was originally The Cellar, and it has nothing to do with Cloverfield, and it's it's not that great, because they saw the screening of the movie The Cellar. Um, previously, it was its working title. Um, but here's the true story. Now that the movie's out, um, Dan Trachtenberg, who directed it, who was the director of Portal No Escape, the YouTube video that everybody lost their minds for, this was his directorial debut with J.J. Abrams producing and the entire Bad Robot crew on board, obviously. Um, Dan Trachtenberg basically told us that the seller script was bought by Paramount Pictures, who is Bad Robot's um, you know, publishing company, and they bought this script and then decided to adapt it into something that could be part of the Cloververse. And I know what you're thinking, what the hell is the Cloververse? Well, the Cloververse is something that was established by JJ post Cloverfield release, and even more recently. Um, essentially, the Cloverfield is no longer a movie with a sequel. Cloverfield is actually the start of an anthology series similar to The Twilight Zone. So Cloverfield was one episode, Ted Cloverfield Lane is another episode, and so on and so forth. It looks as if they want to make more. And J.J. has actually teased Cloverfield 3 in kind of a J.J. Abrams fashion. However, there is the inclusion of the ARG in 10 Cloverfield Lane, which was absolutely huge and amazing and hyped me up for this movie for months, and it was just, it was so great. If you want to get caught up on that, you can go to the subreddit, uh, reddit.com slash r slash 10 Cloverfield Lane, or to cloverfieldclues.com where they talk about all that awesome stuff. So now that you're caught up, this is not a Cloverfield sequel. This is the start of a Cloverfield anthology series to where these movies are like episodes of the TV show Cloverfield in the vein of the Twilight series or the Twilight Zone TV series. I think you know what I'm saying. Essentially, you know, each movie has the overarching sci-fi theme and the, the title of Cloverfield, but they're not directly related. So with that being said, just like Cloverfield, there are some episodes that are good, there are some episodes that aren't so good. Um, a lot of people thought Cloverfield wasn't so good, and 10 Cloverfield Lane is one of the best episodes of Twilight Zone ever. If this was the Twilight Zone, this would be the episode everybody remembers and everybody talks about. 10 Cloverfield Lane blew me away. I'm gonna drop a score on you right away so that if you wanna go watch the movie and all you came for is a number, 9.5. Movie is incredible. 10 Cloverfield Lane looks, makes Cloverfield look like a piece of garbage, honestly. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. John Goodman stole the show. His performance is incredible. He's terrifying. He just looks like he just portrays the character so well. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is absolutely gorgeous. She does an incredible job of her role. And the other man, something Gallagher Jr. I can't remember his first name, but he did an awesome job as well as the guy with the broken arm in the cellar. Um, so like I said, this started out as a kind of movie about being stuck in a, stuck in a cellar and then was adapted into the Cloverfield universe movie. I can't say anything else really about the plot um, other than the fact that Mary Elizabeth Winstead is abducted or whatever, wakes up in this bomb shelter with um, John Goodman's character Howard and Gallagher Jr.'s character um, Emmett. And essentially, she wants to leave because she woke up in a bunker with a strange dude um, and another guy with a beard. And basically, she finds out that, you know, the air is contaminated, there's been an apocalypse, you can't go outside, you know? And she has to 
kind of trust John Goodman, and the story just spins from there. The cinematography is beautiful. It is one of the best looking films I've seen in years. Um, a lot of people gave Cloverfield a lot of crap because it was um, kind of handy cam shot with a mini DV and kind of started the found footage generation. And interestingly enough, it was actually filmed by TJ Miller in a lot of circumstances who played HUD. Um, this movie is not like this. This movie is filmed similarly to how Alfred Hitchcock filmed his things where it almost seems as if the camera is its own person. Um, so it pans rooms, it'll come up, um, you know, close to a book, a bookshelf, if there's something interesting on the bookshelf that will pertain to the story. It's almost as if you're actively there. You just don't talk and nobody knows you're there. So the, the camera works in such a way that it's humanoid. It's, it's very, very well shot. Um, the score is beautiful. Bear McCreary did it, who is known for the Walking Dead score most commonly. The, the score for this is just impeccable. The music, you know, highs at the right points, lows at the right points, it is beautifully scored. It's just, the story's great. From head to toe, this is one of the best movies you can see. And I truly, truly mean that. If you didn't like Cloverfield, if you've never seen Cloverfield, any of those things, throw it out the window. Just go see this movie. Now, if you are a part of the ARG like myself and really enjoy the extended universe and there's a huge fan of, huge fan of Cloverfield, you know, by the same token, go see this movie and dive even deeper into the expanded universe and all that awesome stuff. So, you know, I could continue to ramble about this movie for probably close to an hour about how great it is, but I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. And I really think it's important to go see this movie. And I just want to leave you with the, with the fact that no matter where you think the story is going in this movie, give it maybe three minutes and it's going to be turned upside down. There are so many twists and turns and it is incredible and the ending is actually satisfying. Which, if you guys know me or have seen any of my reviews, very, very, very rare for me to like an ending. Because normally it's hard for people to wrap up a story, but with this being an anthology, you know, I'm not expecting a sequel. It doesn't have to, you know, lead from Cloverfield into this and then into the next one. It's just, it's exquisite. It's one of the best movies. I've seen it in a very, very long time, and I've actually already went and pre-ordered the Blu-ray release because I'm so in love with this movie. So, The Cloverfield definitely earns itself a 9.5 out of 10 for me, and I really recommend that you go see it. Um, thanks to today's sponsor down below, 6 They have awesome shirts. They're 6 bucks. It's in the name. There's a link below. Check that out, and also check out patreon.com slash alteredwalters. You can support me over there. It means the world to me, and it gives you guys some exclusive content. So, it's fun for everyone. Definitely go check the movie out, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!